Yes, give me the particles. Run the particles, particles. <laughs> so I'm just going to begin from the beginning. A couple days ago, I was scrolling on Twitter and I saw this post that really pissed me off. This guy made a fluid simulation, but not like using normal fluid simulation. I don't fucking know how to do that. The goal of this video is to make a 2D physics simulation with a couple balls, a couple particles. Let's do it. As per usual, I'm using 4.0 alpha for the repeat zone. Before we can simulate a lot of particles, we need to start off by simulating one particle, which is why we're starting off with a single point. Of course, we can control the position of this, but the goal is to change the position dynamically with physics. And inside our simulation zone, there are a couple steps we need to do. The first one is adjusting the particle's position based on the velocity. It's going to be a vector, it's going to be called V, and this is going to offset the position on every single frame. I'm going to hit play on the timeline and you're going to see the point isn't moving at all because we're adjusting by a vector that doesn't exist yet. I'm just going to give this a bit more to go off of so we can actually update our velocity. I want to subtract a bit from the Y axis, this is what gravity is. Set this to subtract, make this a little larger than zero, connect that, and then all of a sudden, whoa, new problem was just introduced, this is going to fall forever and we need it to capture in some kind of boundary so we can calculate the length of this vector and what we care about is when this is like greater than some number equal to one under this special condition what we want to do is we want to take our position and basically just normalize it because if it's touching the boundary i'm very bad at drawing the circle by definition it's going to have radius one from the center and normalizing gives us the same vector but with a scale of one play Yes, okay, it's stuck on the ground. I'm gonna show you something that might blow you away. I'm gonna change this position just by a little bit and hit play. And you can see all of the sudden, it almost has some kind of like sliding physics. And indeed, this does have extra motion. Well, basically this particle is falling, falling, falling until on the next frame, it's going to pass through. And once it does that, it's gonna snap back to the circle. So it's gonna make this kind of like stepping motion with each iteration. And that's going to look like it's sliding there. Of course, we have a new problem. That's how the stuff works. You can see that the motion is sliding, but it's always stopping right here. It should probably be going back up and down like a pendulum. Reason for this is actually pretty subtle. Remember, we're updating the position with this V vector, which right now is only being like affected by gravity, but we don't have another thing to kind of define our velocity. Because remember, if we have a particle here, what's happening behind the scenes, what our nodes are doing is it's going downwards, because of gravity, and then it's gonna go back towards the boundary because that is our corrective term, which means we're going from here to here. This new vector can be our uh, update vector. We need to capture this initial position. Remember this one over here, capturing an attribute and making that attribute the position. So we're looking at the beginning and the ends of the network. And just like I said, this is a super easy calculation. It's going to be new minus Old. And to actually store this as our new velocity vector, just store this as V right here. And those of you that were looking closely noticed that gravity would kind of be overwritten here. So indeed, gravity does come at the end here. And if everything goes according to plan, fingers crossed, actually I already know it's going to work. You can see it's doing the thing. It's going back and forth and it's dampening over time. And believe it or not, there's actually just one more step to make this a full system where we can use hundreds or thousands of particles. What we need to deal with is collision. So here you can see I have two particles and I hit play and they're kind of intersecting through each other. But these should be like hitting and colliding and doing something to each other. And before we get to that, just a bit of a cool thing. If I change the initial positions of these, you can see they kind of pop off the wall as a result of our velocity calculation. If we go a couple more frames down, you can see they're kind of crossing through each other. And what I'm about to do, boys, I know what you see, but that's not what, this is not what it means. This diagram means we have two particles with like a radius of the radius, and we have this overlapping distance that we want to get rid of. The way to do that is kind of obvious, right? We kind of bring this particle this way by half the distance, and this particle this way by half the distance. And first order of business, what is this distance? It kind of seems like we can't calculate it, but we totally can. Because if we take one radius, and then we take this other radius, two times the radius is going to be the distance in between these points, 
plus the overlapping area, because you can see there, there's some area in common. Uh, what if there's a particle over here and over here? How do we know which one it is that is overlapping? And the answer to that question is a recently added node called index of nearest. It gives you the index of the particle that is closest to the one you're looking at. So we're looking at the closest particle and we want to know its position. We can calculate this distance in between, which remember is important for finding the overlap. The way we're going to do this is with a vector subtraction to track the position of the nearest one. And if we take this vector and calculate the length, this is going to be the gap in between these two dots. We can take the radius, which we need to define still, but we can take the radius, we can multiply it by two and then subtract this. And this is going to be the exact distance of the overlap. More specifically, we divide it by two to get like half the distance, which each one needs to be offset by. But did we define this radius? Actually, we did. It was a bit sneaky. Uh, when we had these points, it actually comes with a radius baked in. So it's going to work perfectly. And now we just got to make our correction vector. I take this and I normalize it so I know its distance. And then I'm going to take it and then I'm going to scale this by this uh, custom number we have here. In other words, we're going in the correct direction with the correct magnitude. We take this calculated vector and we're actually going to offset the position to get rid of the collision. So we are going to offset it. So we're just moving it. But we don't want to do this to every particle because what if a particle is here and here they're very far apart? Well, we can actually check for this by seeing if our quantity is greater than zero. That means that this distance is less than two times the radius. In other words, they're close to each other. So connect that to the selection. Before these particles were crossing through each other because there was no collision, we now enable this. And you can see uh, they're no longer going through each other. But we also have to account for the other particle that has to go the other way. All we need to do is we need to take this offset vector and scale it by negative one since we're pushing the other particle the other way. So this is going to be our offset. Say only do it where the index is equal to the nearest. And now we have the perfect collisions. Oh boy. I added a couple more particles just to test this. And look at that. We're getting more complex animations. Like one actually goes over the other. Bring up the point count and see what happens. And whoa, uh, this simulation's kind of working, but if we pause, there's so many that are passing through each other. But even though our math is perfect, here's actually what's going on. Basically, these particles are moving too quickly and there's too many of them. The too quickly issue is actually the easy one to fix. You just go to your frame rate. You're calculating tinier and tinier like delta time. But the number of particles is going to be kind of hard to deal with, especially if we get into thousands of particles. Imagine that we have three particles or it could be way more that are very close to each other. Well, when we do our collision detection, and it's only between two particles. So let's say it's these two. This particle decides to move here and this one decides to move here. But imagine that when we move this particle, it's still intersecting with this third one. Basically, the issue is we can only check collisions between pairs and not triplets or quadruplets or whatever. And just because we avoid a collision doesn't mean we're not running into another one. So how do we fix this, you ask? I don't know. No, I do know. You literally just calculate it more time. If calculating it once isn't enough, why don't you do it? more than one. Select everything here, this monstrosity. In fact, because we're in 4.4, we have the repeat zone, which is basically a loop. And now we can procedurally control how many collision steps we're taking. So with two iterations, this is working actually a lot better. But what happens if we go up to like four iterations? Remember, the higher this is, the more expensive of a calculation it is. And I think the higher you go, the more accurate this is going to be in some sense. This method is called substepping. So whereas a step is going frame by frame by frame, a sub-step is doing a calculation multiple times in a single frame. We're still going to have the problem where this thing's chaotic, like it is not stopping, it is not settling, and that's because our velocity is always updating and no energy is being lost in the system, no momentum is being lost. If we take this velocity vector and scale it by 0.9, over time this is going to have some dampening. The simulation settles, although you do not want to bring this too low, uh, or you get this kind of slow-mo effect, which might be what you want, that's how you do like the inception explosion thing. On the other end of the spectrum, if you go above one, you're like adding energy to the system. And while the simulation does look good, we are always, always, always going to have this problem of jittering. This does go down the more iterations you use, but that's like a very expensive way to fix it. There is a way to fix it. I'll talk about it if people care, but let's actually do a bit of a demo here. Instead of having geometry over here, I actually put it inside the simulation. So uh, every frame we add geometry. And then the question is, how does this behave? Yes, this is, this is not bad. I added more spawners. Let's check it out. 
Not bad, not bad. Basically just needs stability tweaks. Yes, give me the particles. Rom the particles, particles. <laughs>